What's up Team Boosted? Welcome back to another episode. Uh, in this one we're going to be explaining what's going on with this, getting some Max Jacks installed, and one of our subscribers is coming down with a pretty cool 2.3, so let's get at it. So the Max Jacks are pretty much just miniature versions of our big lift over there. Uh, they're rated for 6,000 pounds, which is absolutely insane. We're never going to come anywhere near that. But uh, we finally cleared up the space over here, like I said earlier, so we're looking at some potential spots to mount these. Uh, they're on wheels, so they're mobile, so we can have multiple different locations in the shop that we could put these up. Uh, so we're just test fit in a few areas right now and uh, gonna see about bolting them in so we can have multiple projects going on at once. So the first spot that we wanna get mounting points for this jack is gonna be over here behind the pallet racks because as you can see, it allows a good spot for the Porsche uh, or any car, this is gonna be our widest car that we have, to fit over here nicely, get worked on, and not block any of the space so we could still pull projects in and out and have a functioning garage while another car is up on the lift over here. Since the mounting points on these are symmetrical, we've actually just rotated this one 180, and the second spot we're gonna want a mounting location is over here, so we could swing that guy all the way around right here, and we'll have a lift spot dead center of the doorway so that we could pull projects in uh, and do quick things like oil changes or tire changes and stuff like that. Super easy. guys, we're here in the shop. We have another local 2.3 to swing by. This is Cameron. You want to tell us a little bit about the car? So this is a 74 Ford Capri. It's got a 2.3 SVO motor out of an 88 Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. Just like ours. It sounds... <laughs> Are they all 88s? Apparently. Uh, real quick, if you guys are local, even if you don't have a 2.3, anybody who's subscribed and watching, you want to bring your shit down and hang out for the day, feel free to do so. We don't mind. Um, we like seeing you guys' builds just as much as we like showing off our own. So, Cameron's agreed to do a burnout in the shop. All of our neighbors left. So, I guess we're just gonna cut straight to that. Swinging, maybe. Give it the beans. That was pretty good. We'll leave it at that. Alright, so we're waiting on a few things to get the Max Jacks installed, so we're going to begin working on the wide body 911. The point of this is to get wheels that are ridiculously big for this car to fit on it. And um, to do that, we need to go about 3 inches wider than the factory turbo flares. So it's going to be very similar to an RWB look when we're done with it. Um, I think the route that we're going, one second, so we think it'd be interesting to try to get the flares that are too short. These are actually too narrow, believe it or not to fit the car. The way that we're gonna try to do that is to kind of cut it down the middle and then extend this lip out to where it fits perfectly. We'll have the car sitting on the tires and then once that's done, lay some fiberglass, lay some Bondo, smooth it out and see if we can get these rear flares to work. Okay, the first thing I have to do is remove these uh, like rubber, what would you even call these games? Side molding? Just, yeah, this is just molding here. It's like a trim, it doesn't really have any purpose. Um, I already done the other side. Kind of think that I'm gonna like the look 
of the wide body without those because it just accentuates the accentuate. I don't know what the word is. It just makes it look better. It makes it look, uh, you know, like wide, narrow, wide. Kind of makes the flitters pop a little bit more. It's probably it's like not even a hourglass figure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like a flaming. It's like a flaming. A flaming. And <laughs> yeah, so that's good. That's a good thing. It makes it look like it's got a skinny waist and a fat ass. So we're gonna keep that, and uh, I'll probably be able to sell that trim on Pelican and recuperate some of the cost of what we're gonna do. I'm gonna explain that in a second. Let's take that uh, that other side off real quick. Okay, so we were looking at this and the original plan was to give it a cut and then move this lip outwards to meet you know, the, uh, I don't know, that looks about two and a half inches, maybe three inches that we need to make up for. We were just gonna move it out and then try to lay some fiberglass and just basically the idea was to extend it. But we were looking at this and then um, Sam actually had the suggestion, why don't we build a border, like use that expanding foam to fill it out, kind of sand it flat, get it to the shape that we want it to, and then use that like rough outline as a mold and then make these out of carbon fiber. So I don't know all the details. Apparently Sam knows how to do it. And um, this is a project that he's convinced me that we can do. Again, in the worst case scenario, we end up having to buy the flares that fit the car. So the selling point for me was RSR width wide body carbon fiber bolted to a gold car. It's going to look really good. So if we could pull it off, that'll be awesome. The first step here is to use that expanding foam that I was just talking about. I got this Loctite uh, for big gaps, fills up to three inches, exactly what we need. We're gonna make a cardboard border, um, kind of like a little little trough for it to fill up, and that'll give us the, uh, the base that we need to start sanding and forming. Uh, this says that it's paintable, so that's a good sign that when we lay our resin on it, it's not going to melt. Um, we can do things to prevent it from melting if that's the case, but anyways, don't know what I'm doing, but we're gonna make it happen. <laughs> it depends on how hard it is. It's not really sticking to the flare. So we gotta wait for the whipped cream to dry. So we're gonna go over and install our second set of jacks, our car lift. Okay, so what we're hoping is that it, it's gonna cure all the way, because right now, it's like a medium rare steak, and it's firm on the outside, but the, the inside's definitely still liquid. <laughs> and then it says it's sandable and paintable, so we'll be able to do some cutting and some sanding and shape it, and then that'll be our rough outline for our mold, and then via the mold, we can make a carbon fiber flare in a perfect world, so. It's we worth can try. It. We can try. Now I feel though that we've said it. If we can't do it, then we're just. Then we suck. Yeah, then we suck. Yeah, but I mean, everyone knows that anyway. So, we've literally pulled off everything that we said we're gonna do. Though carbon fiber RSR with on a gold car will be awesome. This thing's gonna have a funny <laughs> profile. This finger flare. Just looking at it, like <laughs> it's gonna be the same width out here as the arch there. So it'll be like. It's like weird. No, because we can't. We'll probably end up blending it a little more than that. Yeah, probably. I would hope so. Yeah, if, yeah it's not going to be like <laughs> a be fucking it'll funny be as stupid funnel. tunnel. <laughs> yeah, it'll just look it's, stupid. It'll wide. go like that. Yeah. Like, like the like very end of a funnel. Like your fender flare is half of a half of a velocity stack. This shit does not come off your hand, so. Yeah, it's fucking. It's the ultimate goo. Oh man, it's so gooey on the inside still. We have a window into the. It's not done yet. <laughs> it's not done cooking. No. So it says an hour on the tube, but that's for like three inches of total product, and we've used like six metric tons of this shit. So, 
So we're gonna probably let that dry overnight, wrap this up, and then we'll come at you guys with probably way more um, knowledge on how to do this, and um, we'll have known by that time whether it works or not. Way more intent on how to do this. Whether we're losers or not. Whether we're losers. So if we can't get the foam to work, we can always just get like model clay and do it that way. Um, all we really need to do is get it so we can use it to make a mold for uh, for the carbon fiber. So we'll, we'll figure it out one way or another, and uh, hopefully it'll come out good. But it's not looking very positive yet. <laughs> no, right now it's looking very much like the fuck. The future's pretty dim right now, but I, I swear to God, guys, we'll we'll make this work. All right, guys, it's the next day, and this stuff is hard as a rock, which we're actually pretty happy about. Uh, we'll be able to cut through it, be able to make a mold, put some carbon fiber in a vacuum bag, and uh, all sorts of other stuff. But you guys are going to have to wait to see that because we still have to figure out how to do it. But Devin's going to pick a winner for this video's giveaway. If you guys are not familiar with the channel, we give away products from BoostedShades.com every single video. It's also the best way to support us, guys, BoostedShades.com. All right, this video's winner is... M-R-K-T-H-M-N, something like that. Hit us up at teamboost at boostedchids.com or through any of our social media platforms. We'll get back to you, ship you your prize. If you guys wanna win, all you gotta do is like, subscribe, leave a comment. This video's comment could be um, the question that we ask you, which this time, do you guys think that we're gonna be able to pull this off? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident in this today. It's very firm. It's, uh, yeah, what do you think? I mean, we end up pulling off all the ridiculous stuff that we attempt to do, whether we know how to do it or not. So I'm pretty confident, but we want to hear from you guys. Yeah, so just drop that in the comments if you, whether or not you think that we could pull this off and um, or anything you want to comment. Like, subscribe, eligible win. Thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Fuck. You took my line, bro. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. <laughs>